Welcome back everybody to a uh, special unboxing. This is the Company of Heroes Kickstarter from 2017 or 2018. I can't remember. Seems like a while ago, but um, it's pretty impressive. It comes in this. It's like a plastic tote. It's not the it's not the best quality, but it is it is cool. Um, we're going to take a look at the entire contents of this. Now it did not actually come in this box. This box came unassembled. You kind of had to pop it up, but just for the uh, the value on showing off, this is how it's meant to be shown. So this is how I'm going to show it. Um, we're going to look at uh, take a look at the contents inside in a second. We're going to get down and uh, up close to all the contents, all the all the miniatures and all the pieces. Um, I don't know a whole lot about the game. I did when I ordered it, but again, as you get older, you forget more. So I don't actually remember how the game plays. I have a, a vague idea, so if I get anything wrong, again, this isn't a review. This is more of just an unboxing. So if I get some of the details wrong, hey, it is what it is. Um, inside here is everything in the Kickstarter apart from uh, one thing, which is the, I can't remember what they call it, the early bird um, Pathfinder set. I think it contains a... An, a, a tank destroyer, an elephant, or a Ferdinand, whatever that's called, and some Pathfinders from the U.S. Um, um, Airborne. Anyway, just take a look at the box. Really, really nice. War crate. You know, it has a, on the top, it has these real cool locks. You just push that down, push that down, and now it, it can't be opened. You unlock them, open right up. So I don't I don't know if this is something that they're going to have in retail or not, but um, this is it's just it's just a really cool thing just to show off even. So that's why I basically assembled everything in. I opened up all the boxes and I put it all physically in here. Um, there was also a email from the company that made this to say to check your contents. So I opened every single box inside just to check for the contents. But we're going to go through it here together and you can see what see what it's like. Okay, just be back in a second. Uh, just one quick detail before we get into the contents. I just want to show you how it opens. It physically opens and the flaps fold down flat on each side. So it's pretty cool. Here's the contents. Uh, there's the core game. I believe this is the four player game. I can't remember if the two player game is different or it comes in a different box. I, I don't think so, but this is the four player version of it. Um, and we've got all the actual packs in here. We're going to take this uh, box out. You wouldn't mind taking that out for me, honey? And we'll. Put it on the table. We'll go through the core box first. I'm trying not to make this video very long, so if it's broken down into a couple of parts, it is what it is. Well, that is heavy. Yikes. Here's the... Whoa. Don't break the table. <laughs> so you can see it's a pretty hefty box. What can I put this up against? Um, put a Star Wars Legion box right here for, for show. It's the, the height of one of those. So it's fairly big. Sorry for the shaky cam, I'm actually doing this handheld instead of on a tripod uh, just because it was such a big box I couldn't get it all in frame. Um, so let's go through the contents. Let's see, do you mind open that up? Oh, yeah, be careful of the slides. Yep. Cool. Here you go. First things first. These are the display boards. What we'll do is we'll take a look at everything right this second and then we'll open up each individual thing and take a look at them in a second. So you got your... I don't know, these like battle boards kind of thing. There's four of them. You got um, a set of cards here. These are the, they go in the physical boards. I know that, sorry for the glare here. They go physically in there and you get to upgrade your armies in some way. These are your cards for your um, actual buildings. So you get Soviet, British, American, and German in here. So. There's only one type of each, so you get three Soviet, three German, blah, blah, blah. Um, here is some terrain pieces. So you'll see here you got your machine gun bunkers, your flags. Now the base game comes with these cardboard tokens, but the, the Kickstarter version physically has the terrain. So you get all these pieces in plastic in there. So we'll go through that separately. We get the books. Now the books are amazing. Like, I don't know the, if you can tell this on camera, but the books are pretty... I'm, I'm blown away by the books. The books are nice. They're really nice. They're, they're, they're not really paper. They're like semi-card. 
awful color. Yeah, it's nice. So this is the comes in two ways. It was really nice. They come with the basic rules and then the advanced rules. The basic rules are fairly fairly small. They're not very hard rules, I don't think. But the advanced rules, they're they're really thin. There's hardly any advanced rules. So that's good. If I could have one critique, it's that the rule book is actually huge. I mean, if look at the size of the table. If you had this rule book on here, it takes up a good chunk of your table. Anyway, minor gripe. And then you get your mission booklet, which is your scenarios, I guess. And from what I've seen, there's actually quite a few scenarios telling you how to use the terrain. Sorry about that glare. Uh, and then you get how to set up your boards. So there's that. There's quite a few. It's fairly thick. Really cool here. This is the deco sheet for your miniatures. Soviet, German, British. More German? Soviet, German, British, more German. Oh, the Americans are white. You can't see them very well. They're there, though. And then you get another set. Looks like markings. So you got some nice Russian ones there. Panzer Lair and whatever that other one is. Don't know. Pretty cool. It's nice that they have those. They don't have to do that. And then another nice thing that they have is they have this thing of uh, caring for your, your miniatures, which is how to get the bendy barrels. You know, pretty much everyone would know that. And if you don't, it's a pretty good description of what to do. It tells you how you can do upgraded miniatures by just painting them. You know, a five minute paint job right there on the right. Or on the opposite side is your painting guide, your QR code, and your RADA QR code, which is really handy, actually, very handy. And then we get into the miniatures. Um, so let's take them out one at a time. Okay, sorry for the bad cut there, but here we are. We're going to look at the miniatures next. And uh, we're going to start with the Soviets, just because they're on top. Um, and what's really nice is they, they made these like plastic molded trays to store all your miniatures, which, you know, once the, once the lid is, it has like a little indent here for your cards, like your, the, um, I can't remember what these ones are called, but there's the main cards and then the secondary cards for your base. So what I mean by that is, I mean, these ones here and then these ones here. Which is a really nice thing to do. Oh, shaky, kick the camera. Uh, it was a really nice thing to do. I mean, they, they've thought of a lot in this, so not just the miniatures. Now, as you'll see, the miniatures are they're hard plastic. They're a here's a SU85. They're a weird hard plastic. Some of them, some of them I find are fairly bendy, and others are rock solid. I don't know what the difference is, why why they are that way, but I'll show show you that at a later date. But I mean, can I get in there real good? I mean, a little bit of flash, a little bit of mold cutting there needs to be done. So there is some cleanup, SU-85 on the bottom. But I mean, what more do you want? There's not, <laughs> there's not that much more detail on, on other miniatures. In fact, this one might be as good as any other miniatures. You know, it'd be hard to drill out that barrel there, but I mean, for game pieces, and again, there's nothing stopping you using your own miniatures. If you have 15 millimeter miniatures, there's nothing stopping you using your own to just uh, um, to use instead. And I actually, for some reason, even though it's like a wine red maroon color, I really like it. It's a really nice color for the Soviets. Usually Soviets are some sort of green. Here's a, like a, I guess that's what, an M5 half track. I mean, there's even detail inside. There's the exhaust underneath. There's three of them. T8485. I mean, I'm really impressed with the detail on them. I mean, these will paint up really nice. Did I say 85? T it's just a T34. Not, not 80, it's a T34-76. Uh, the turrets do, do turn, like I just did there. The turrets do turn. I have no idea if you keep turning it, if it snaps off. I don't think so. I think it's meant to turn. But, hey, looks good. There's two of them. And so far, nothing's been too off camera. Nothing's been too warped with the barrels. I saw SU seventy six. Uh, his barrel looks fine. The detail looks. Looks really nice. Apart from a little bit of cleanup. Really nice. There's, there's two of them. And then you get, uh, I can't remember, T70. Yes, T70. Barrel's a little bit 
bent there, not a big deal. Nothing that can't be fixed without some, some hot water. You know, does the scale does the scale up right? Yeah, it's scaled up. You know, they've done their research on the scale of these things. Looks right. There's three of them, and then you get your little wad of miniatures just quickly, like you have the spots for your infantry soldiers to sit in. I mean, what's wrong with that? That's pretty cool. So then you get your, your little soldiers, your whole bag of soldiers here. And you get, uh, now these are not the most impressive figures. These look like, that looks like a hockey player, to be honest. Just a little curve on the end of his humongous ammo pack there, but that doesn't look the best, to be honest. But it's not the worst. Is there, are they all the same? Yeah, they're all the same. So, I don't know if I can zoom in there a little bit better. My hand actually looks worse than the... I'm not sure if that helped or not, or not but hey, uh, there we go. Let's go back to regular zoom. Okay, so there we go. There's the Soviets. I'll pack that all the way later. Oh, thanks, honey. Uh, next up is green, which is probably American. Now, I wonder what that was supposed to be, if there was anything supposed to be in there. Maybe not. I don't know. I don't know the contents exactly, 100%, but there's a space here for something that's not filled up. But we're here for the miniatures. Uh, here we have a, a Sherman with a lot of actual extra added detail. Sandbags, some wood. Is there wood grain on that? Let me just take a closer look off camera here. No, no wood grain on that. Uh, the barrel's a little bit bent, maybe. You know, some extra bits and bobs all over it. Uh, the one, the one bad thing, if you can say it's a bad thing, is they're both exactly the same. But I mean, a couple of little bits of extra details, like you could even stick an antenna on here, or I don't know, to make them look a little different, but. Otherwise, they're actually really nice. And again, the the turrets turn. The again, you can see the warped barrel there. It's too bad, but hey, when oh, that turret popped off, ooh, perhaps H S, whatever that means, means, or S H Sherman probably S H. <laughs> uh, but hey, there's a, a hollowed out bit there. Maybe you can change the turret. Maybe that's what the um, the thought was is that they could change out the turrets on these. That's really cool. I didn't know that. The T-34 didn't have that. Um, or maybe it did. Here we have a M7 Priest. The artillery piece. The detail inside is really nice. You got all the little ammo along the, the racking. Along the side there. The gun looks like the proper gun. It's really nice. Priest. Two of them. You got the Wolverine here. A little bit of flashing there. Barrel's not bent, but it's kind of sloped off weird. Does this turret come off? Nope, looks like it just turns. I very don't want to twist that too hard, but it doesn't move very well. But I mean, that looks really nice. I mean, if you paint, if you collect 15 millimeter World War II at all, I mean, these figures are serviceable. In a little bit, I'll pause the video and I'll get um, some of my current miniatures out and we'll compare the sizes to the current 50 millimeter range on the market and we'll see what it's like. Uh, you got some greyhounds. For some reason, I don't know. The looks a little weird. The gun looks a little bit too high up in the turret there, but maybe not. Maybe that's just me. Some rudimentary exhaust on the bottom there. The wheels are really nice. I keep forgetting that. I gotta make sure I have this on camera. <laughs> Three of them. You got your ambiguous Jeep. Every American player needs Jeeps. Gas canister in the back, the grill, three of them. Again, you get your uh, your tray for your pieces. Let's see if the GIs look any better than the uh, Soviets. You know what? The GIs do look a little bit better. At least you can tell the helmet and the backpack and the, you know, the rifle, the M1 looks more like itself kind of i mean the imagery oh sorry no shaky the infantry are the are the weak spot in this i think i mean it looks like a lot of detail was put into the tanks and the vehicles but the infantry were kind of a 
let's just say they're better than Axis and Allies, but they're not as good as the current range, which I don't really mind because what I plan to do with this game is use my current 15 millimeter infantry, base them on little squares like this, and use them instead. I don't, I don't plan on, on using these for this game. I say until I actually phys physically have to paint something, and I probably won't. So here's a different commander. Here's a looks like a general or a spotter. Let's see what's in this bag here. Might be different. Oh, got a a really anti-aircraft bazooka there. Just look how warped that is. Yikes! I'm only joking about the anti-aircraft part. It just looks funny. Um. Oh yes, look at this. This is another good one. <laughs> Another guy with his binoculars. A little better bazooka. There's a good one. So we got one non-warped bazooka. One, two. All right, so you got your bazooka teams and whatever those guys with the binoculars are supposed to be. Again, really nice tray. Uh, we got two more in there. We got what else we got, honey? We got the oh the beige dudes. So these would be the British. Again, all the trays are full here. So I'm wondering if I'm missing something from the US. I have to check that. I don't know. Um, oh, this is neat. Okay, so I see something really neat about the British here is the first thing is they have the Cromwell. So first we look at it with his bent, slightly bent um, gun barrel. I love the little cogs and that looks really good. But the engine bay there but I see here you get different turrets whatever the hell this thing is this must be the, the mortar version of it the, so I guess this pops out yep perfect will this pop in does it pop in wow that's cool that's a little bit of uh, model engineering for you there instead of making a whole new tank just pop the turret off so that's really cool um, what do we have here? We have the, the AA Crusader. You know, no problems with this tank. It still looks as good as the rest of them. One minor, minor gripe. Maybe it was a packaging thing, but I can't stand anti-aircraft vehicles that uh, don't have their guns in the air. I wish that was... The turret does come out. Maybe all the turrets come out. I wish it was kind of sticking up in the air to look like an actual anti-aircraft vehicle. Otherwise, it just looks a very like a very strange tank. But two of them, two Cromwells, one of my favorite tanks. I don't know why it looks like a shoebox, but it really fast. The barrel looks huge on this. Maybe it's really thick. Same with the same with the Cromwell barrel looks really thick. But anyway, really nice. Uh, then we get, I'm not sure what this is called, a Staghound. Yes, it is a Staghound. Well, keep it on center camera. Um, I don't really know what these are supposed to look like to begin with, so... Kind of turd turn. Barely. Really tight. Three of them. And then we have the Universal Carrier, which... Any fan of British World War II will have these in their arsenal. With the little Bren gun sticking out there. Detail inside, really nice. Three of them. And then we get on to the ubiquitous British infantry. Soviets were kind of crap. The Americans were a little better, and the British are. Uh, they kind of got the webbing. The helmet brim does not look correct, really, but I mean, it's, it's not bad. The Lee Enfield doesn't really look like a Lee Enfield to me. What's this weird thing sticking out here? Is that supposed to be the... Ah, stop shaking the camera. Downvote me for that. Huh. This look... Anyway. We're not here for the infantry, so let's move on. Um, what else we got? Piet team. Now, I don't know if this is historically correct way you'd fire a Piet, but it looks like you'd knock your face off. But, I mean, I always thought they were supposed to fire these lying down because of the recoil. This is like a Arnold way of firing a Piet. A whole bunch of them. 
B2, whatever that means. So they're okay, apart from the pose, which I don't know if that pose makes any sense. You know, knock your teeth out or something. Anyway, there's the British. We'll move on to, I guess, the last one would be the Germans. The Germans. The baddies. There's a lot of stuff in this box. Oh my god. We're already at 20 minutes. Okay. Same thing. Really cool tray. Backwards. I like the contents of this already. I don't know. Pet peeve. The whirlwind or verbal wind or whatever this is called. It should be pointing upwards. Oh, it kind of does. Well, that's neat. Oh, I like that. They didn't have to do that. That's cool. Okay. Mad props for that. I just said mad props on the camera, Warren. Yeah. I'm I'm with the it crowd now. We have to get a divorce. <laughs> That's really cool. And now I'm in trouble. Um Kubel Wagon. It has an interesting mechanic in the game as it's kinda of like a reinforcement point. So when your your troops, when the Germans take um casualties, if there's a Kubel Wagon next to them, they can rebring back in a dude, a man. A soldier, whatever. Uh, the armored car. Really nice. Uh, center camera, Derek. Stop forgetting. Really, really nice. There's three of them. The tiger. Ba whoop, the barrel's straight. And the detail is... Well, it looks like a tiger, so that's all you really need. Looks like a tiger. Doesn't have any of the... Zimmer it or anything on it, so I guess it's an early production tiger. It's got some mold lines there around the turret. But again, I intend to use my Flames of War figures with this, so I mean, I'm not too bothered. But I mean, this is actually fairly heavy. Like, it's not, it's not light. It's a chunk of plastic. Um, I can't remember what this is called. A Panzer IV something. A Sturm Panzer. What an odd looking vehicle. Looks like something the Italians would make. Does my light keep going in and out there? Hmm. Anyway, there's two of them. And then you got probably the most common tank you would see. You got the Panzer IV. And it's got the uh, side skirts. Which I always like to see on those. Especially 1944 models. It's a really nice tank. How did it ever get on the go in the field with such thin tracks next to the tiger tracks my god okay let's see are the germans any better than the i guess the top one would be the americans right now are the german infantry any better no they're just as bad as the soviets well they kind of got a bayonet there i'm not sure what kind of weapon that is they're firing there anyway. And then we got the little support dudes, whatever these are. Oops, what do we have here? A Panzer Shrek. Kind of warped. That thing is, is it, was it really that big? It looks like it's, Jesus, it looks like it's twice the size of him. It's just a bunch of Panzer Shreks there. So, yeah. that's the Germans. That's the, the figures in the starter set. Sorry for the bad cut, I just moved the box over here and we're just going to take a look at the, um, the whatever these calls the the particulars of the game the the things that drive the game forward again everything's in this own little tray which is really really nice it's really it's although i have had it where if you have it on its side in the box this kind of pops off and everything falls out so be leery and wary of that okay here we have several different things we have the timers for each player hourglass timers i mean there's not much need to see see them uh we have these cubes for activations uh, each there should be nine of each, I think. So you have for four players, you have nine of each, and these are actually really cool. Really, they feel nice. I don't know why I like those things. I do. You have different types of dice. These look like upgrade dice, so you can upgrade your guys to be better defense. Again, I don't know the rules. Uh, this this one here means um, concealed a bit or hard to hit. I can't remember. But you've got your upgrade dice for upgrading your dudes. I would tell you, but I think these are damage dice. I don't, to be honest, I have no idea. I think they're damage dice. D6. These are your um, attack and defense dice. Uh, from what I recall, is you have your infantry, 
anti-infantry side, your anti-tank side, your flame side, and I thought there was one more. Maybe not. Anyway, the green means something's uh it's a it's a like a save. Let's say if you're making a save, the, the green shaded ones means that you've you've got a shade and the red ones means it's a hit. I I think I think again I haven't played the game, but I have watched it being played and it seems to make sense. But go to a different channel if you want something more detailed. Uh I have no idea what's going on. Uh okay, and then you got a bunch of uh these cubes, white. I, I I think these are for marking damage on vehicles. You put them down next to a vehicle. If a, if a vehicle has four wounds and it gets a, a wound on it, you just put one of these markers down. I'm not exactly sure what the white ones are for, but we'll find that out as we go along. You get them. Uh, then you get the trays for the infantry. Now, initially, I, I thought from the Kickstarter campaign that these were going to be colored for the nations, but you basically you put your little infantry in these little slots, like if they've got five infantry models, one, two, three, four, five, and then you here along this side you put your um your upgrade dice so these these dice here they kind of sit in there if you've paid for any upgrades or as the game goes on if you've purchased an upgrade you just choose the upgrade dice you put it in there and you keep, keep going which is really neat and these are for obviously they're hexes for the map but i don't know what vehicles are for must be for something <laughs> we'll find that out uh, and then we get on to, oh yes, yeah, so you get on to the machine guns. There's, I'm only going to take one out of here because they're all the same. This is the machine guns for everybody. So everyone uses the same machine gun. It looks like a 30 cal machine gun. So everyone uses that. Even though if you're German, you still use a 30 cal looking machine gun. The models are okay. Uh, these are the mortars. So everyone uses the same mortar. Pretty ubiquitous looking thing. Looks like a German one, not that I know, but there you go. Everyone gets a little bag of mortars. And then you get your anti-tank guns, which uh, initially I thought these were uh, all the same, but it looks to me like you might get different ones maybe. <laughs> they look kind of weird because they it looks like a, looks kind of like a pack 40, but with no back on it. They're all the same, but these these kind of go on. Uh, if you have an anti-tank gun, basically you take these stands, you put uh, three infantry on there, and then the the anti-tank gun kind of sits, you know, like that. And you put the infantry around it. Uh, so they're the same for everybody. I mean, I, I I get I understand. It would have been something nice if they put in the actual Soviet Ziz style guns and the British, uh, you know, fifty-seven millimeter, whatever you want to have there. But that's that's. The contents of this I'll just put all this back in here quickly if I can and I'll show you the rest well the maps that are all that really left and since we're getting on in time here it's 28 minutes I'm not gonna go over 30 minutes just because I it's uh, it's just too long a video we'll we'll have to cut it into two different ones there's this lid for that I want to take a quick look at these things here quickly before we go um, these are the These are the... Oh, now I know what those white things are for. Actually, those white cubes are for the tracking your... Um... So, there's a... Uh... Let's take a look at the Soviet one. Here is the Soviet... The Soviet player starts with these three cards. Essentially, one is flipped up. So, number one up here is flipped up. And two and three are put this way here on the table. And basically, you have to... Uh, let me see if I can all this in frame. You have to buy... You start off with this, and this is what everything costs. It, it tells you how much the cost is for this unit tells you what the unit does has the stats there it seems like it's hard to read but once you start playing the game it's actually fairly simple but right now it looks very confusing but once you've played the game a little bit and you want to upgrade you spend the cost here and then you flip up flip over the number two so you went from a soviet headquarters and now you've also built a support company or com company <laughs> um and now you can have th these three different things and their associated costs and then you go here and you pay their, you pay that, and now you have an armored company. Company, I know, that's silly. And then you can get tank, uh, anti-tank gun. And what's neat about these is, as you're playing the game, the they're assuming that by the time you get to buying this thing here, you've kind of have already have the round sequence down. So the round sequence is on the back of this one, 
and the defense matrix is on the back of this one. So as you're playing the game, at the beginning, you have your set of stuff here, and then you have the sequence of what's happening and the matrix for what, what those uh, colored dice mean, which is a really neat idea. Like, I think that's genius. You know, and hopefully by the time you get to this stage, you don't need to look at those. You kind of have a, a fair idea of what's going on. So that's a pretty bit of engineering then that I really like. And then you get the Soviet ones. The British get three. You know, you get a British headquarters, platoon command, company command. The U.S. get U.S. headquarters, company command post, and battalion command post. And the Wehrmacht get head headquarters, Panzer Grenadier Company, and the Panzer Corps. So each, you get the four players, and that's only one. This is only, basically, this is only one type of playing for each each guy. And then, uh, I'll put these down for a second. And then you have these cards here, which are, I can't remember the exact name. It's eluding me right this second. But we look at these all at the same time, just to kill a couple of birds with one stone. Let's say this is your this is your board. So this is this is essentially this bit up here, right there, is what you're using as you're playing your round or your turn, whatever you want to call it. It's not technically a turn, it's your round, I believe, or your phase. I don't remember, but it's not a turn. Um a turn in this game is moving a physical tank a few steps. So I pick my my turn, I pick a tank, I move him three spaces or whatever, or I shoot, and then um, that's a turn. And then the other player has a turn, you keep going back and forth, turn, 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 turn. And when everyone's done, I think that's a round. Uh, but anyway, you have your, let's say you're the Soviets. You have your stuff up here. I can't tell if my lights are kind of flashing or not, but um, hopefully this video is okay. Um, you have your your board, you have your turn board, like the, the things that you're collecting for the turn, then you have your stockpile, and as the turn ends, whatever these are at, you move these up by that amount. So you can like hoard resources, but this is where you spend your miniatures from. So if you want to buy a tank, and I say this, uh, what was this? this, is an infantry dude, it's a conscript, he costs three manpower. So wherever you are on the physical stockpile, you go down one, two, three, and now you have you bring out the you bring out the conscripts so it's really really intuitive but then you can also put these things here you put these things right here and these are kind of like upgrades you can get these upgrades and they give you special abilities of well, veteran infantry doctrine it'll tell you what's going on there you can upgrade your guys um, and you get a whole host of these there's there's so many the little cat's got a cold there uh, airborne mechanized like these might be specific to certain fractions i think these are the u.s ones if i'm wrong here i might be wrong i don't know how this works but you get a whole host of them so you've even though you only get one type of uh well one type of building uh, progression you do get all these different types of upgrades that you can do so you don't have to play the same game two or three times over now these white cubes that's what these are for now i remember now i remember Boom. So these are your victory points. You start off at zero, essentially. And then you'll have your stockpile. Everyone starts at four, I think. But let's say at the end of the turn, you have two manpower. At the end of the turn, you reset back to nothing at the beginning of the new turn, and you go up by two. And then you spend it down based on what you purchased. And, and that's how you win. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, the last thing we're going to look at... I'm sorry, I'm racing through this because I don't want to make it too, too long. The last thing we're going to look at is the boards. Now, the boards are um, one of the highlights, I think, of, of this uh, of this game. As in, they, they really went... Just packing up as I'm talking here. They really went all in on the boards. So let's just get them out and take a look at them. Now, I didn't open them beforehand. Honey, if you wouldn't mind getting the boards out. I, w I might have to pause the video and uh, get these out on uh, a bigger... Um, bigger size so there's four boards and I think the boards are double-sided I think they are I'm pretty sure they are which technically would give you eight boards so I'm gonna pause it and go up a little higher so we can get a look at these boards and I'll be right back okay so here we are we're back a little higher up a little sh more shaky obviously because uh, I'm bursting to go to the washroom here but um, this is a Stalingrad map I'm gonna have my beautiful assistant here open it up for us she doesn't like to hear her voice on camera she doesn't like the sound of her voice so she doesn't say a lot but she is usually always here. Ooh, nice. Wow, can I even get that in frame there? Really nice. Let's get down. 
into what looks like a kind of a church, a ruined part. So these are the these are where the resources go. And so here's a resource here, a manpower resource. You put your little flag there, and whoever captures that moves their track up by one on the resource at the end of the turn. Some ammo. So this is Stalingrad. Flip it over, and you get a beautiful. British Air Base of some kind. What's it called? It's called Monastery. So Monastery 2. So I guess it comes in two pieces. So we'll move that aside and we'll get Stalingrad 2, I guess. So I guess it's the reverse side of this. So I guess it is, it's not really four individual maps. It's more like, or eight individual maps. It's more like four individual maps. Because there, there's part one and part two. That's really nice. The cathedral? Yeah, really nice. Yeah, so it goes this way here. Oh, nice. That's really nice. That's huge. That's huge. And my cat's as low. What do you think? It's not for lying down on the sheriff. Uh, he's my best bud. Okay, let's uh, move on. The other two, they fold up pretty nice. How do they feel? The creases look like the. That's the seam. I mean, could you really, could you really tell that it was? It lays down really flat. And the, you know, the, I don't know a lot about boards, but this looks pretty high quality to me. Okay, what do we have next? Sheriff is just going to take over. What do you think? Okay. He's always with me down here. He never, he's never not with me. Okay. Uh, this looks like an Africa map. What's the name of this one? This one is L331-1. Looks like there's a lot more open space on this map. Oh, there's another... Oh, the cat's in the middle here. We'll have to go to the side. But there's another bunker there, it looks like. I can't believe I'm doing this and I'm, the cat's taking up half the table. Wow. I'm living the dream. Really nice. What's on the other side of this? Do, 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 do. More cat. More cat. It's like more cowbell. More cat. Um, oh, this is a really nice map too. I like this one. I think I like this one the most. Oh, yeah, nice bridge. Little bridge. This is really nice. Oh, graveyard. Ugh. Now, yeah, little fences. Yeah, it's really nice. It's a really nice map. Now, where did we see the dead snowman? It was one of these maps we spotted a dead snowman. I don't know why I'm showing it, but <laughs> that's hilarious. Okay, well, I mean, that's the maps, and we're at 38 minutes. I think we should uh, come back for um, video number two, and we'll try and get through the rest of this stuff. But, I mean, wow. I mean, if you didn't jump on board this Kickstarter, this may not be very helpful to, for you, but perhaps when they release this stuff in retail, you have a better idea of what's in the boxes. Okay, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in a minute.